Zero Gravity. Hello everyone and welcome back to the world of Hellion. I'm Milo Živković, a story writer here at Zero Gravity Studios and this time we want to share with you our second gameplay video. This video is about to focus on new gameplay elements and player cooperation. Or what happens when they are not trying to shoot each other and take over the ship. So the three main features that we have in this video are asteroid mining, station building or salvaging, however you want to call it, and a brand new ship for you to play with. So this ship is a basic utility vessel and the first ship the players will have access to. This is a basic or stock version of it. As you explore the system of Hellion and gather additional tools and resources, you will be able to upgrade and customize it towards your playstyle. Mining is the first new feature that we wanted to demonstrate in this video. So we need to prepare our characters for exposure to vacuum and equip them with appropriate tools for the task at hand. Now this is the hand drill, the most basic mining tool you can have. It comes with a battery and a canister, so it cannot operate indefinitely, but it is more than adequate for all the early tasks in the game. It can also be used as a weapon if you find yourself in a really, really bad situation. Don't worry, we do not expect any bloodshed this time. The new captain made sure everyone was unarmed for the mining trip. After all, he knows exactly why they are one man short. There are several different ways in which you can obtain the resources you need to survive in the system. From harvesting the atmosphere of a gas giant to salvaging an asteroid mining. The game will feature different asteroid types that vary in shape and size and available resources. Some of the larger ones, like the ones you can see before you, will have normal orbits that you can always revisit in case you need some extra ore, while the others you will have to look for as they cross paths with the planets in the system. In this case you will have a limited window of opportunity to harvest the ore that you need, so having a friend to help you out during the operation or in case something goes wrong is probably a good idea. Remember, you're not the only one looking for resources out there. This time, however, our crew is not at all worried that someone might show up and crash their mining party, so they get right down to business. Mining asteroids can take a very long time, especially if you have a big task ahead of you that requires large quantities of ore, like fixing your ship after a skirmish or restoring a derelict vessel so you can add it to your fleet. An operation like that would require several trips back to the ship and use of multiple storage canisters, so you might want to improve your equipment before undertaking it. This is why having a friend or two with you is helpful, as they can help save a lot of time by bringing fresh batteries, additional RCS fuel and spare canisters. The other option would be to repair and upgrade your ship with a specialized mining module. Outfitting your ship with one might not be easy, but it is well worth the investment if mining is the name of your game. Also, keep in mind that various asteroids and meteoroids will have different types of ore and in different quantities. So, you might actually require a lot more than just one trip to finish the operation you have planned. The mining operation is complete, although we might have cut down on the necessary time just a little bit. And the crew is finally returning to the ship. Now, in the following part of the video, we will focus our attention at station building in the world of Hellion. But before we do that, we can use this opportunity to show you a bit more of the ship. It is faster and slightly more maneuverable compared to other ships in the Altair Corporation's fleet. It has a large cargo hold and an aerodynamic hull designed for harvesting gas giant atmosphere. It also features a top-mounted airlock that can be used to dock the ship directly to other stations or with other Altair Corporation vessels. With the crew safe and sound aboard the ship, we can move on to the next part. Base building in Hellion is a bit different from other games. The system is a wasteland full of ruins and derelict ships, so we wanted to shift the focus from building new to repairing and restoration of what was once destroyed. Throughout the game you will find many sites like this. Some modules will be severely damaged or destroyed, while others may need extensive repairs to once again work as intended. Some may be so damaged, in fact, that looking for a new site might be more efficient than repairing the model that you've just found. Finding these sites is not an easy task, so you might need to look for hints or clues on sites that you do manage to find. Once the players have located a site, the next step is exploring it for useful equipment. Keep in mind that even if a module is unusable, some of its components may be intact and useful for maintaining your own station in proper condition. In this case, our crew had decided to build themselves a new home at this location, but connecting various modules even in decent condition is somewhat complicated. This part is the power supply module. It is the heart of any proper space station, and probably its most important part. To connect the modules to the existing station, or build a new one, the players will need to access the module's built-in RCS system. The RCS system is used to maneuver the modules in the correct position so they can be linked to other structures via standard docking ports. These ports are compatible across all Altair ships and stations, allowing a simple, fast and easy connection between different pieces of equipment. 
One of the players is going to inspect the module and we will use this opportunity to show you the interior and talk about its operation and purpose in greater detail. Its entrance is a standard docking port that can be used to connect to other stations. It is in standard zero gravity, but as soon as you step through the door, the gravity will kick in, if the module is of course operational. This is probably one of the largest modules that you can find, second only to the cargo hold or a massive warehouse. It is a hot fusion reactor based on the designs of the 20th century, such as the tokamak and the ether facilities. It runs on hydrogen isotopes and produces an incredible amount of energy that is then stored inside its massive capacitor banks. Only one such module can provide power and gravity for an entire station if maintained and refueled at regular intervals. Compared to this system, the solar panels look tiny and insignificant indeed. The Altair version is designed to function reliably in all conditions and therefore has a sturdy interior and strong outer plating that protects it from the elements and other harmful conditions. One of the players has successfully linked up with the RCS system on one of the smaller corridors. In certain cases, players may be required to refuel the system before the module can be moved. The other player now moves outside to observe the docking procedure. Once the modules have been connected, the player can move freely between them. One down and one to go. And now we get to see the interior of the complete structure. With all the connections secured and the foundation of the new base set, the crew can finally take a few moments to rest and celebrate a job well done.